Thank you, and I'll yield back. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Levin. Um, so I've just been handing a note uh, for members. Lunch is available uh, in our conference room uh, for those of you who uh, are hungry. I will now uh, recognize myself for five minutes. Uh, I, I want to thank uh, the chairman for holding this uh, hearing today, as well as for the leadership uh, that he has shown um, uh, you know, on the Natural Resources Committee. We know too well that NEPA has grown out of control. It's grown from a five-page NEPA statute passed over five decades ago, which we should remember is only a procedural statute to what we have today. Over 136 pages of regulations and rules to follow in order to uh, adopt the NEPA uh, rules. The Biden-Harris administration's 136-page NEPA phase two rule that it completely disregards the laws passed by this Congress and agreed to by the current administration. Uh, before I begin my questions, I'm going to uh, ask unanimous consent that the following letters of support uh, for this draft uh, legislation from the following organi organizations be entered into the record. The International Union of Operating en Engineers Local 49. Jobs for Minnesotans, up north jobs, better in our backyard, the Area partner, Partnership for Economic Expansion, and Minnesota Mining. Without objection, they will be entered. Ms. Reams, would you agree that the discussion draft before us today treats all industries and all projects equally? Yes, it does. Your organization is, of course, a strong proponent of developing renewable energy projects, such as wind and solar. These renewable energy projects require significant amounts of critical minerals, which we're largely getting currently from overseas adversarial countries. If Congress were to enact permitting reforms that only benefited renewable energy projects or policies that only made it easier to build transmission lines, but fail to enact reforms that benefit domestic mining, would we still be dependent on foreign adversarial nations for the critical minerals necessary to expand renewable energy? Yes, sir. We are dependent on about 80% of the rare earth minerals are imported from China. Mr. Pugh, in your written testimony, you note that on projects you've worked on in your career, you've typically increase the project budget by about 25%. And you have done this because if and when, if and when the project met certain, quote, major federal action, end quote, the project would be forced to undergo the NEPA process and the local communities would, would incur the significant, uh, significant compliance cost along with it. Under the chairman's legislation, this automatic trigger would be removed, likely saving communities like the ones that you serve from additional costs. I know, it, I know it would do so for many of the rural communities in northern Minnesota that I'm proud to represent. In your experience, Mr. Peer, how do small rural communities find the additional funds to deal with these compliance costs? Can you explain further how this is a burden on small rural communities? Yeah, small, small and rural communities working off of limited budgets anyway. Uh, so anytime you put a layer on top of that, uh, it's just an additional burden. And again, in my case, uh, I'm not the smallest community. Uh, I would avoid federal funding uh, <laughs> literally as often as I possibly could. And in your, view, in your view, do the bills before us eliminate all the NEPA challenges you face, or would NEPA remain significantly, significantly stringent? Um, I don't know that would eliminate all of them because we still have to go through permitting processes with the Corps of Engineers, for example, you know, on our regularly funded projects. So we're still having environmental reviews even without the full NEPA process. Would any, would any of these bills jeopardize the clean water or clean air in the communities that you serve? Uh, not that I can tell. So even after these reforms, comprehensive environmental protections would remain in place and projects will still need to comply with strict environmental standards. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Beard, um, I represent uh, northern Minnesota where we have uh, mining. We mine the iron ore that makes uh, about 82% of America's steel, and we know that's a strategic national security interest. We currently have, <clears throat> excuse me, we currently have the biggest untapped copper nickel find in the world. 
as Ms. Reem says, as she wants to transition and bring wind and solar on board, would you rather get those minerals mined by union labor in northern Minnesota under the strict environmental and labor standards that we have, or would you rather purchase those minerals from 15 of the 19 industrial mines in the, in the Congo that used forced child labor? Where would you rather get those minerals? So when it comes to jobs, I look at doing whatever we can, or I believe we do whatever we can to help our own people in our own country, not to sacrifice. It's not an either or case. However, if rules are not in place to protect Native American lands in your community there, or voices are not heard from the people who would be affected by the mine, because mining uh, in that form and fashion is very intensive and it does, destroys the land. If we where don't would, take those under consideration- Mr. Beard, where would, you, where would you like to get those minerals? Mined domestically in Northern Minnesota with the best environmental and labor standards that we have, or mined in China, which uh, or the Congo, owned by the Chinese um, uh, uh, government, would you rather have them mined with, with uh, United States domestic mines and domestic labor standards rather than the Chinese forced slave labor? That's an easy question, not a trick question. Where would you have, rather have them mined? As, as I said, I'd rather have the mining done here. Thank you but very problem, much. But the problem that, with that's, that, that is that, that, that the that, laws aren't in place. Mr. Mr. Beard, We've been, <laughs> we've been trying to permit uh, one of mines for 21 years and another major mine for 14 years. At the same time, we are, we're, we're purchasing these minerals from foreign adversarial nations that aren't in our best interest. So in order for us to be able to transition, let's domestic uh, uh, mine. We have to bring these additional sources of energy uh, you know, in place, and we can do that by domestically mining. And my time's up, and we will go to uh, Representative Ledger Fernandez from New Mexico. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Chair, and thank you for raising the issue around our adversaries and mining. And I would just like to remind